stable conditions, right? This is what everybody wants. And I just talked about it on Lake Erie. I had stable conditions and them suckers left. <laughs> that bait left. Why did it leave? Because the bait won't put up with it. If the bait is being fed on and being eaten and eaten and eaten, the predators will drive the bait out of an area. So even in stable conditions, we still have to adjust. You know, we still got to change. The, the, and I relate this back to in uh, tournament angling. When I go to the, the registration meeting the day before the tournament and guys have been fishing all week, the guys that say, man, I'm on them. I'm catching four pounders. You know, I caught 20 pounds yesterday. I kind of like that because I know that those fish aren't going to keep doing that for very long. So the odds are if you were catching them two days ago, you're not going to catch them tomorrow, right? Those, the bait will have moved, and the predators are going to move with that bait. So what, as an angler, I always want to, whether I'm a tournament guy or I just like to go fishing, I want to be where the fish are coming. I want to be, for instance, a spawning cove in a warming trend. I'm here in the spawning cove in the back of the back, and that warming trend is driving bass right to me. That's where I want to be. They weren't there yesterday, but it's warming today, right? So I'm where they're coming to. I always want to be where fish are coming to. That's going to be because you, if you're in that developing pattern, you're going to catch five fish today, and you're going to catch 10 tomorrow. And the ones you catch today are going to weigh 15 pounds, and then you're going to catch 20 tomorrow. Right, when you're fishing in that developing pattern, fishing where they're coming to. I spend all my time fishing, strategizing about where these fish are moving to. And I develop my ability to, to and I can't say I can predict it, but I can make an educated guess on where they're going to. And the more I do it, the more I practice it every day, the better I get at it. And the more often I intersect those fish and I run into those days where you catch four and five pounders all day. And that's what I want. That's what I want for you. So watch, watch, uh, you know, watch those stable conditions. Be very, very conscious that things are going to change. Wind. Wind condition is, uh, is key. Um, I talked about how wind can really, really help you. I tell you, one of the things I do, you know, is I go a little bit against the grain in the wind and I fish with the wind on my back. Okay. Fishing into the wind, couple bad things. Number one, your trolling motor is boom, boom. You're making a lot of racket, and you're fishing in shallow, clear water. Man, you're, you're, those fish are so hyper aware of your presence when you're doing that. You know, casting distance is, is reduced. Casting, you know, mechanics or, you know, and, and backlashes are troublesome. A lot of, lot of problems. The stronger the wind gets, uh, the more I am likely to put the wind on my back, and I allow my boat to drift with the wind and I'm silent. I'm, move, I'm easing along with the wind. My, with a simple roll cast, I can pitch that bait 100 feet out there, you know? And I, I will trigger strikes really, really effectively in the wind and windblown banks. One of the things about wind and windblown banks is the, it's really, really good for you unless it's muddying the water, all right? If the wind is hammering on a bank so hard that the water's muddying up 30 and 40 feet off the bank, well, now you have a negative scenario, right? That's, that's too much wind, or it's, uh, it's one of those clay banks or one of those banks that really silts up when the wind blows on it. But rocky banks will never do that. Rocky banks will stay crystal clear. Uh, so even with heavy three-foot waves rolling on them. So, you, so long as the water doesn't muddy up, wind is definitely your friend. Uh, and you want to pay attention to the changing in wind, right? This is an adjustment. When it's slick, calm out, um, certain baits aren't going to work. And then, the, and then as the wind starts building, you want to start thinking about spinner baits. You want to start thinking about crank baits and chatter baits. Wind, what it does is the rifflage on the water, I call it. That's a word I made up. Um, it, reduces, uh, it reduces light penetration through the water, right? So it opens up the fish's strike zone. It pushes plankton up on banks pulls shad in with it and the bass will come in after that right that's kind of how it works so when you're calm and it starts blowing start looking for those opportunities windblown points windblown rocky areas windblown whatever 
I want to look over there. There's uh, some of the places that I fish. One of the places I fish every day is the Chesapeake. And I uh, fish in the Northeast Creek. And it's clear. And I don't fish on the protected side. I go to the side that the wind's blowing on. You just cannot catch them as good on the, the side that's protected from the wind. It's too slick, too calm, too clear water. You, you can't get close enough to catch those fish. You move over to the other side of the creek where the wind's blowing, boom, you can have success all day long. And the information Bash University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.